My educational giant report was on the psychologist John Watson. Um, he is known as the father of behaviorism, which is an educational philosophy that we are learning about this week. Um, he was born in 1878 and was raised in South Carolina. He kind of had a tough upbringing. His, his mother was very strict and religious and his father was an alcoholic who ended up abandoning his family. Um, when he was only 13, um, John Watson was kind of known to be a poor student and to um, how to have a unruly personality where he rebelled a lot and he was said to have been arrested twice in his youth. Um, even though he had this reputation, he still went to college at age 16 at Furman University in South Carolina. After receiving his master's there, he then went to the University of Chicago um, and got his PhD in psychology. After he did this, he went and taught um, at Johns Hopkins, Hopkins University in Maryland. He taught psychology. Um, there is where he developed his philosophy of behaviorism. And um, he was influenced greatly by his professors and colleagues through his educational career. Um, at the time, John Watson was one of the first American psychologists to go against Freudian theory. Um, Freudian theory is basically that our unconscious mind is is what determines our behavior. Um, and John Watson did not believe this. He he believed that um, our behavior can be controlled and changed through our environment. Um, he defines behaviorism as the science of observable behavior. Um, and this has been a huge comp contributor to psychology and um, to education. And basically, behaviorism is, is just a way that um, authority figures can, for lack of a better word, manipulate or control or, or change an environment to change a student's behavior um, to be more desirable. Um, he, John Watson applied this to child development and that's where his um, infamous experiment um, called Little Albert um, took place. He um, took an infant, um, which for experiment ethical reasons, he named him Albert. Um, and what he did was he exposed this infant to different animals like rabbits and rats who the, or that the infant was not initially afraid of. Um, and after the infant kind of got used to being around these animals and playing with these animals, um, John Watson then associated these animals with a very loud clanging noise. And so whenever the infant would be playing with these animals, um, the loud clanging noise would occur, which um, the infant did not like, and it scared and shocked the infant. And um, he would cry every time he heard the clanging noise, and eventually the infant associated this clanging noise with the animals, um, resulting in fear of the animals. And this, this shows that behaviorism is true because um, John Watson was able to change this infant's behaviors towards these animals um, through controlling the environment. Um, this, this experiment was kind of said to be unethical um, because the child was never reconditioned and, and it was always left with the fear of these animals. Um, but even though it was unethical, um, it still proves this theory to be true. Um, behaviorism is used a lot in education, even though a lot of teachers just don't like it, and um, it's kind of a controversial the or philosophy. Um, most teachers use it in some form. Um, 
examples of behaviorism is um, positive and negative reinforcement um, to result in a desired behavior by students. Um, behaviorism is the most practical method of education and um, produces the best results. Um, um, classrooms with a behaviors teacher have very set rules and established procedures and expectations. Um, it is it results in a more desirable learning environment because students are calmer and quiet, and the and the teacher is able to teach more content because of this environment. Um, I have seen this a lot in my life. I have many teachers who have used behaviorism even though they wouldn't consider themselves a behaviorist. Um, for example, um, I've had teachers who use positive and negative reinforcement. I, I had a teacher growing up who had this star system to where they would um, put our names on individual stars on the chalkboard and it had magnets on them and when we would behave desirably, our star would rise to the top of the board. And um, it would kind of show to the rest of the class that we were a good student and we were what the teacher liked. And um, every student wants that feeling, especially when they're young. And if our, if our behavior was undesirable, then our star would fall and we would get a note sent home from the teacher. And that was not something that any of us wanted because we were too scared. And um, that is one way that our teacher used behaviorism. Um, by using that positive and negative reinforcement to um, get the desired behavior from us. Um, I've seen the benefits of it. Um, it does result in a better classroom environment, but I personally would um, not use it in my teaching classroom, but as I said, most teachers do, even though they wouldn't consider themselves a behaviorist. But, um, John Watson has changed education forever because of his contribution to psychology and education through behaviorism.